ABC 57 News 19. New tonight, catalytic converter thefts jumped more than 500% in Elkhart just last year. That's according to the Elkhart Police Department, which is kicking off 2022, investigating the disappearance of 94 catalytic converters from a Forest River RV plant. It's a growing problem across the U.S., but as I found out, differences in Indiana and Michigan laws may be driving thefts locally. Francisco Barrios considers himself lucky. Are they always on the front? Well, kind of. That hole is where a catalytic converter should be. Francisco considers himself lucky because he's only had seven of them stolen off the lot at Phoenix Auto Repair in Elkhart. He says other business owners he talks to are ripped off once a week, leaving folks like Francisco with nothing but a rusty saw blade used to steal the part. I'm hungry because we lose money. A stolen catalytic converter can sell anywhere from $50 to $2,000, meaning the stolen part is sometimes worth more than the car it's stolen from. First of all, we had to call the police department. Mm -hmm. Then we had to call the, the customer and say what was going on. But it's not necessarily really a new crime. Jason Ray with the Elkhart Police Department says catalytic converter thefts have become a daily issue demanding more resources from the department than ever before. We've had to really broaden our scope of where we're hitting and patrolling and, you know, doing all the enforcements there. In 2020, Elkhart saw 60 catalytic converters reported stolen across the city. In 2021, more than five times that, with at least 316 taken. Basically, just a money-making opportunity where it's I'm driving around and I see maybe a car parked off by itself and I can go get it. It's a nationwide issue, but Officer Ray believes a discrepancy in state laws are helping drive thefts in Indiana and sales in Michigan. According to the Institute of Scrap Recycling Industries, scrap metal dealers in Indiana are only allowed to buy a catalytic converter if the seller can show the certificate of title, registration, ownership, receipt from repair, or an affidavit from law enforcement showing proof of ownership. But up in Michigan, along with ID and personal information, sellers are only required to sign a voucher saying it's legally owned. That's one of the ways that we focus on it as well as trying to identify, okay, who, if somebody steals a catalytic converter, who are they selling it to? Elkhart police have taken a two-pronged approach. First, officers are cracking down on buyers, making sure they're keeping records required by law and using those records to ID potential suspects. Second, EPD is increasing officer details on high-risk areas to catch thieves in the act. You know, using unmarked cars or um, foot patrols and bicycle patrols, things like that that, you know, maybe where we can be a little more covert. Folks like Francisco hope to see the strategy pay off. So thieves' luck will run out. So I have to pay for money from my family to the customer. Owners can proactively go under their car and etch in the VIN into their catalytic converter, which can help catch criminals. But the auto industry to this point hasn't done much to stop thieves. ABC 57 reached out to all the major automotive manufacturers. Not one responded with possible solutions on the manufacturing side. Many are converting the majority or all of their future catalog to electric vehicles, which do not need catalytic converters.